Hi folks, HR Funk here. Many of you know that I'm a lifelong fan of the 1911 pistol, and some of you know that over the course of the last nine months or so, I've added two new 1911s to my collection. The first was the Tezos U.S. Army 1911 pistol that, depending upon where you find it, comes in at a price point of about $450. The second being a Colt Competition Series 1911 that comes in at a price of about $1,250, so about $800 more than the TSOS. They're both chambered for the 45 ACP cartridge, but they are configured differently. The TSOS pistol is in basic USGI 1911A1 configuration, and the Colt has several more bells and whistles to go along with that higher price. But I started to wonder recently. For the additional $800 of the Colt, when it comes to just putting bullets on target, how much difference in performance is there? Well, I decided it was time for a shootout to answer that question. So a couple of days ago, I packed everything up and headed off to the range to find out. And before I get into the results of the shootout, here is a close-up look at our two competitors. Here is the Tezos U.S. Army 1911 pistol. And here is the Colt Competition Series 1911. By the way, if you're interested in a full review of both of these pistols or either of these pistols, go back through my channel and you'll find full reviews along with the initial range results that I saw when I took them both to the range for the first time. But as I said, this is going to be a shootout between these two. And the first thing I wanted to look at when I got to the range the other day was just pure accuracy. So I set up from the bench and the very first thing that I did was a slow fire benched accuracy test with both pistols. I shot seven rounds through each one, so a full magazine with the Tezos GI style magazine, and seven rounds through the Colt to see just what that accuracy would look like. And for this test, I was using my own hand loads, which are 230 grain ball bullets that are loaded to USGI specs. So about 850 feet per second for those 230 grain bullets and here's what the results of that test looked like.
So as you saw, I started off with the TSAS 1911 U.S. Army pistol. And I don't think I said this before, but I was performing that slow fire accuracy test from a distance of 30 feet. And with the TSAS, I ended up with a group that is just over one inch. It's one and one eighth inch center to center for those seven shots. And with the Colt, I actually ended up with a group that was slightly larger. This one is one and a half inches center to center, but it's one and a half inches because of this one shot. And that may well have been my fault. The other six shots are in a group right around one inch. And I'm really going to call that a dead heat between these two pistols because if I went back out and shot that exact same drill again, I could very well have a reverse as far as which pistol has the tightest group. Now, one thing I did notice when I was shooting is because of the superior trigger of the Colt and the superior sights with that bright fiber optic front sight, it was easier to shoot my group with the Colt pistol than it was with the TSAS, which doesn't really come as a surprise, but I did definitely notice that. So when it comes to ease of firing accurate shots, it's easier with the more expensive Colt. So that's some of what's going to justify that additional $800. But still, when it comes to just pure accuracy between the two, when you can take your time and squeeze the trigger, again, I think I'm going to call those results a dead heat. So at this point, I wasn't quite done with my accuracy test yet. Recently, our own Reverend Skip Boyer, who along with being an extraordinary holster maker, is also a bullet caster, sent me some of his 45 caliber 200 grain semi-wad cutters. And I loaded those up, and I wanted to see if the both pistols were going to function with a wad cutter bullet, and I also wanted to test the accuracy with that ammunition. So I got things set up again, and this time I decided to fire 10 shot groups. So I have two five shot or five round magazines that I loaded into the pistols, and I fired out a 10 shot group with Reverend Skip's bullets to see just what kind of accuracy I would get from both pistols with those, and again, also to see what kind of functioning I would get. So Skip, your bullets are up. Let's see how the accuracy looked this time around.
And for anyone who's curious, here's what Skip's bullets look like. Uh, always seems to be in the shade when I try to come over here. But this is the profile, and there's a little bit of light on there. And Skip, I think you did yourself proud. I think the accuracy that we saw from that 30-foot bench shooting was outstanding from both pistols. And I've got the targets right here. And here is the Colt target. And once again, I've got one shot, this one up here, and this was absolutely a bad shot. I saw the sight drift up on that just before the trigger broke. So this one is a called flyer. The entire group, including the called flyer, is two and three eighths inches center to center. But excluding that flyer and counting just the group that was all good shots, or at least the best I could fire, has 10 shots in an inch and a half. And I think that's pretty good for a 10 shot group from that distance. But here again, with the TSOS pistol, we see a group that is one and three quarter inches. And again, I think if I went back and shot these side by side again, the difference could basically be reversed, or I should say the uh, best group could be reversed from what we see here. I think the TSOS really for a $450 pistol is shooting right with the Colt. And the accuracy is just looking outstanding from the bench with both pistols. But that's accuracy from the bench. So I decided to try one more slow fire accuracy test. This time it's going to be firing from a standing two hand unsupported position. And we're going to start to get a look at the shootability of the pistols and how much the ergonomics might play into the accuracy that we're going to see when someone is actually shooting. Now, there's something I have to tell you about the slow fire standing accuracy test. Things did not go the way I expected with either pistol. When I fired the Colt pistol on the fourth shot, and I fired five shots with each pistol from that two-handed uh, unsupported position, when I fired the fourth shot from the Colt, I am applying, as I shoot this, a very slow, steady trigger pressure, or pressure to the trigger. And I've had this happen a few times with handguns that have light triggers. And the Colt has a very nice three and a half pound trigger. And what happens is essentially a bump fire. You'll notice when I'm shooting that fourth shot with the Colt, the pistol fires, it recoils, and as it recoils, it resets the trigger because the trigger moves away from my trigger finger and it comes back down out of recoil against my trigger finger and it fires a shot. It's more or less a bump fire and like I said, I've had this happen with other handguns that have very light triggers. In fact, I had it happen with another 1911 pistol just a couple of weeks ago. So obviously it fires an unintentional shot, and you'll see that shot fired in very rapid succession. After shot number four, the pistol comes out of recoil and virtually automatically fires shot number five. So I had to stop then, put another round in the pistol, and then you'll see me come back up and fire that intentional fifth shot, and then we'll look at that five shot group. With the TSOS 1911 Army pistol, I had a malfunction after the fourth shot, the last shot out of the magazine didn't fire, but the reason it didn't fire is because I managed to get my thumb underneath the slide stop during recoil and lock the slide open. So of course it didn't chamber that final round. So I had to stop, reload that back into the magazine and then fire out that round. Neither one of these is really attributable to the pistol. They're both more or less shooter error on my part but I wanted to make sure you understood what you're about to see as I shoot this drill. Then we'll finally look at, uh, take a look at the accuracy that resulted from the drill.
So a little bit of unintended activity during that stage, but when I finally ended up with two five shot groups, and again, here is that shot that fired more or less automatically with the Colt, so I did not count that in the five shot group. But with the Colt, I ended up with a group that is one and a half inches for five shots, center to center. And for the TSOS down here, I ended up with a group that is one inch center to center. And I think if nothing else, when I'm comparing the TSOS to the Colt, I can say at least, and I think we'll all agree, the TSOS is putting a pretty good barrel in that thing. The accuracy that I saw through all three of these tests was very good. And the biggest difference that I notice when I'm shooting these two pistols are the sights and the trigger with the Colt. It's just easier to fire my accurate shots with the Colt than it is with the TSOS. So I cannot complain about the accuracy that I'm seeing, or at least the accuracy potential with the TSOS pistol at all. So at this point, I decided it was time to move on to some more defensive oriented drills. And I started out at a diff distance of five yards from the target with each pistol. And I'm firing five shots in six seconds into the body of the target. And you'll see the results of that right here. So the scoring that I'm using for my targets that you see in the video are any shots that strike in the red circle are worth three points, shots striking in the white circle are worth two points, and shots striking in the blue body area are worth one point, except for designated headshots, which are going to come up in the next stage of fire. In that stage, the shots that are designated as headshots count as three points if they hit in the scoring area of the head. So when I finished the first stage, the TSOS pistol actually had a two point advantage over the Colt firing those five shots in six seconds. So now I move back to a distance of seven yards to fire two consecutive failure drills, which is two shots to the body and one shot to the head. And here's what that looked like. So my time limit for each failure drill was four and a half seconds to fire my two shots to the body and one shot to the head. And this is where we really start to see the advantage of that fiber optic sight and that better trigger on the Colt pistol because it was so much easier and you saw the results yourself to fire those failure drills with the Colt. And I did have managed to have one miss for a headshot with the Colt, but it was easy to keep those shots on target and I didn't feel like I was trying to rush to get the shots off. Whereas with the TSOS pistol, trying to find those smaller sights and get a sight picture quickly and then manage that trigger to squeeze off good shots was not nearly as easy. And you saw that the shooting that I did with the TSOS pistol was not nearly as good. Now with a more forgiving time limit, where I could have taken my time a little bit more with the TSOS and lined up those sights and squeezed off the shots, I'm sure, just as we saw with the earlier accuracy tests, that I would have been able to shoot as well with the TSOS as I did with the Colt. But when we start to add that time component and we start to have to get up on target, pick up that sight picture and squeeze off shots rapidly, 
that there definitely is a very real advantage for the more expensive Colt. Now, another um, facet to the Colt's design is the fact that it has a dual recoil spring system. Now, I did not feel any difference in the recoil of the Colt when I was shooting those drills or when I was shooting any of the drills for that matter. But it may well have been keeping the pistol a little flatter and helping me reacquire the sights a little bit more quickly because there was not as much movement of the pistol with each shot. I don't know. Again, I wasn't conscious of that, but it is possible and I wanted to at least mention it. So for the next stage, I went back to a distance of 50 feet from the targets. And from that distance, I had a time limit of 10 seconds to fire five rounds into the body of the target. And I'll show you the results and then I'll discuss this a little bit more as far as what I think we're seeing here. So if things started going downhill for the Tezos pistol, and by the way, I'm, I know I'm not pronouncing that right, it's Tezos or something like that, but I'm, I'm going with the best pronunciation I can. In any case, if things started to go downhill for the Tezos pistol on the failure drills, it really started to come off the rails on the 50 foot drill. And I felt like I was rushing my shots. Again, I'm trying to find those tiny sights and I'm trying to manage that heavier trigger and fire accurate shots on target, and it just wasn't happening with that time limit. Conversely, when I changed over to the Colt, I've got that big, bright fiber optic front sight and that beautiful trigger, and it was easy to squeeze off those shots and keep them on the target. And we're, we are really, as the distance increases, starting to see the advantage of the more expensive Colt pistol and its ability to put accurate shots on target quickly. Like I said before, if I had all the time in the world with the Tezos, I could probably have done better with it from that distance of 50 feet, but adding in the time component made that very difficult, and the shooting that I did was just not very good with the Tezos pistol, but with the Colt, I was pretty happy with it. So for the final stage of this shootout between my two recently acquired 1911 pistols, I backed off to a distance of 25 yards from the targets, and from this stage, I had no time limit. And the stage, I decided to fire four shots from that distance of 25 yards and see how well I could do. And I'll show you how the drill went once again, and then I'll discuss the results when we come back. So once again, from 25 yards, I was struggling with the small GI sights on the Tezos. Now, those are the sights or the pistol that I carried when I was 19 years old in the Marine Corps had sights just like that. I don't remember having that much trouble with them back then, but my eyes were a lot younger than they are now. <laughs> uh, nowadays, when I switched over to the Colt with that better 
fiber optic sight, and really the fiber optic is what I was noticing. The rear sight being blacked out didn't do that much for me, but I was able to focus in on that bright red fiber optic sight. And again, that beautiful Colt trigger allowed me to just squeeze off those shots and keep them well placed on the target. So now let's take a look at how the targets ended up after all the shooting was done. And here is a close up look at our Tezos pistol. And I've got to say, at the end, I don't really think this target reflects quite how good a pistol that actually is. As we saw in the pure accuracy test, it did very well there. What you see here is more a reflection of just me trying to manage those smaller sights and that more difficult trigger or that heavier trigger. But in the end, the Tezos ended up with six shots in the three-point red circle, including this one that just broke the line as well as one three-point headshot, two shots in the white two-point circle, and one, two, three shots, this one just broke the line, in the one-point blue area. So that's a grand total for the TSOS pistol of 28 points. Now let's take a look at the Colt. And here is our Colt target. And this is really some stellar performance from that Colt pistol. I managed to pull one headshot off and one shot just outside the white line there. So those are the only two shots that I fired that don't count for score. Other than that, the Colt has 10 shots that are in the three point red circle area, along with one three point headshot. There are seven shots that are in the two point white circle and one shot that is in the one point blue area for a total of 45 points for the Colt pistol, which is by far the winner. And again, this really reflects a lot, the sight and the trigger, and maybe to a smaller degree, some of the other features of the Colt, like that dual recoil spring system, like the undercut trigger guard and what have you. But this is essentially what you're getting for that additional $800 with the Colt. Now, TSOS does make a model with the fiber optic sight and a lightened three hole trigger and all that. If I get my hands on one of those, I might reshoot this test and see if that TSOS pistol, which is more expensive than the Army version that I have in this video, but still much less than a Colt, and that might be very interesting to compare to the Colt and see what kind of results we get with that pistol. So there you go, folks. That's the extra performance you're getting for the additional $800 in price tag for the Colt pistol. Now, is it worth that extra money? You're gonna have to decide that for yourself. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarbirdBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarbirdBunker.com, you can find my t-shirt there, as well as all of Nathan's other firearms and patriotic themed gear. And if you use my discount code at WarbirdBunker.com, which is HRFunk4U, that'll save you 10% off your purchase from WarbirdBunker.com. And last but not least, the new discount code from House of Pain Munitions. If you go to House of Pain and order anything from there, you can use my discount code, which is HRFunk10, and that'll save you 10% off your purchase from House of Pain. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.